Now this is the uh, Mon Key. Uh, this was produced first in uh, February of 1948. And uh, I just happened to have that QST right here, and here is the full page ad for the Mon Key. Now this is a uh, electronic keyer and uh, it automatically makes dots and dashes. In 1948 it sold for $29.95. As you can see this one looks really good. There's no, no uh, dents or anything. It's actually still got the uh, plastic cover for the key. It's a little bit uh, yellowed from age and there is a, a slight hairline crack right here. <clears throat> Still got the paddle. Now the paddle looks like it was cracked at one time and it's been glued back together but it works fine. It's got a beautiful uh, Bakelite base. I'll show you the other side here. Okay, now I'm going to plug it in. It's got an off on switch right here. So it's now on. <clears throat> Let me turn the volume up. As you can see, it works. Dashes. Dits. Okay. Now let's take a look inside. First, I'll unplug it. Okay. Now I have replaced the um, paper capacitors here with uh, some new capacitors. And I replaced the uh, the filter capacitors. There are two of those. And when I got this, the 35W4 rectifier tube had been replaced with a solid state uh, rectifier right here. Originally, this unit used what was known as a line cord resistor. The line cord was actually a dropping resistor to drop the 120 volts AC down to uh, the, the filament uh, voltage required for uh, these three tubes. And the problem with that obviously was when the cord wore out and had to be replaced, uh, you couldn't find one. And as far as I know, nobody sells those. So what's been done here is the, the rectifier tube has been removed, solid state uh, rectifier installed, and these two tubes are, uh, are wired in parallel and they've tapped the six volt tap for both of them. So they've installed a uh, <clears throat> six volt filament transformer right here. That's really a better and safer solution. And it works fine. Now here's your little two inch speaker. Here's your resi resistor assembly here on the switch. That changes your speeds. And then this is your volume control over here. And down here is your keying relay. And this provides uh, isolation between the keyer and your transmitter. And it's rated to be able to key two amps. So it would key virtually any uh, old-fashioned transmitter whether it be cathode keying or grid block keying or for that matter solid state keying if you wanted to. It's just a, a pair of open contacts so when you hit the key the relay closes. Let me plug it back in and give you a demonstration on how that works.
Okay, let's see if we can see the relay. And underneath here is a, a pair of terminals and uh, I just connected a wire and I've got a cable here and we can plug this into uh, the transmitter of our choice. And there you go, look at those tubes, they're glowing beautifully. So everything is uh, intact. Um, the, uh, the key actually works quite well. And of course this was um, in 1948 nobody heard of iambic keying and so this doesn't have all the features of modern keyers. It doesn't have self-completing dots and dashes. It just makes dots and dashes as long as you hold it. And if you let go too soon, the dash will be shortened a little bit. Now, some people actually like that better because um, it, they've learned on the old-fashioned keyer and it's actually easier for them. And we've got a copy of the manual here. And the manual has the schematic. And it tells you how to adjust the key. A little breakdown there of how, how the key is made. It's, it's made differently than your modern uh, uh, iambic paddle. So you, you can't substitute a modern paddle for it, but uh, this one works okay. And again, this is the Mon Key, and it was made by uh, the Electric Eye Equipment Company in Danville, Illinois. And they started selling these in 19, uh, February of 1948. And sometime during the uh, the 50s, I think they must have gone out of business. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching.